Aloha, Cupcakes. A few years ago, if you told me I would be standing in my garage, one, if a few years ago you told me I was going to have a garage, I'd be a little surprised at myself. But if I was going to be in the garage shooting video and taking still photos with professional level cameras with lighting and actually know how to use aperture control and, and focus and, and all of the things that go into this, I would have laughed at you. But here we are. And then to make matters worse, I never thought that painting purses was actually be something that was popular amongst those of you who enjoy my work. So, I mean, here we are. I mean, it's not the same as me painting cars and or motorcycles, the occasional jet ski, or even a glass eye. It's still loads of fun, especially when I get to do things like this. Because I had no idea how this was even going to go. I just grabbed a paintbrush and just kind of have to go. I don't have the luxury of being able to use guidelines and, and grids on these things because it's just the pencils don't work. So I have to go and take a paintbrush and just trust my skill set and go. Like this one. <laughs> like, I don't even know what the intention was. I just went. I do like that jade eye color, though. It has fast become one of my favorite colors to work with. But even this. See how it's, like, not in focus? Like, that's just stuff that I am learning to both work with and work against. I mean, yeah, I'm using a 50-year-old lens on the front of a really big, fat cinema type of camera. I don't even think it's a cinema camera. I think that's just the way it's marketed. But it's fine. Because uh, I'm learning the hard way how to do all this stuff because it's so much more fun that way. Here's that jadeite stuff again. I just That's the... Uh, the, the teal-ish color. If this was a color I could have worked with back in the 90s in conjunction with some of the pink colors back when everything had to be Kansas City teal and pink, I would have just decimated some people by having this color. And now, now it's just some weird anomaly color that I'm working with and just having fun with it because it does stuff like this. It's not a harsh accent line. It just kind of goes there and then it's just poof. Yeah, and deeply technical terminology coming out of me from someone who's been studying things for a couple decades. You know, because why? But look, while I'm filming this, aside from the striping on there, that was oodles of fun. Like, I got maroon to kind of flow, which anybody who's ever worked with maroon, just, you know. But just trying to adjust things, get things onto there, just to get it to where I can film it. This has been a lot of a fun experiment for me, and I'm learning things that I never thought I needed to know. And like these, if you really thought about this one, so let's say 20 years ago, and you were to tell me that this was an option, I would have had one of these for every guitar I owned. In fact, I may start painting one for every guitar that I own because it's kind of awesome. Actually, you know what? I kind of like the idea. I think anybody who's watching this video right now, if you're a guitar player or a bass player, if you can cover my cost on making one of these things, I want to do some custom guitar straps based on the idea that you're going to get photos and video of you using it with your gear and send them to me. Yeah, you heard that. I, I like this notion. This sounds like a great idea to me. That being said, my friends, I'm about done hanging out in the shop with this thing. I am totally done editing this video. And um, as always... Stay moist, my friends.